Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today I had the opportunity to work on what I called an amazing reel on um, one of my uh, YouTube shorts. And why is it amazing? Well, this is in a beautiful condition reel. This one belongs to Scott. He found this one at a West Coast fishing reel, uh, flea market. He bought a lot of fishing reels and sent them to me to be redone. This is the J.A. Coax model 625. And why is it amazing? Well, they started production of this reel somewhere around 1940, and it finished uh, its run in 1960. It was the longest running model of the uh, Coax reels. Well, sometimes when you see the uh, Coax signature, some people actually put them on eBay as jealousy, uh, but it's actually Joseph A. Coax, C-O-A-X. Uh, and it's a nice reel, manufactured in Bronson, Michigan by the Bronson uh, Reel Company. I believe at some point they actually purchased Cokes. Uh, Bronson also made a lot of trade reels, so they may have just manufactured it. But Joseph Cokes was an engineer, and he designed very big fishing reels initially. And in the early 1930s, he was making reels to compete with uh, uh, the largest of the trolling reels that were out there. He's making 10-0 and 12-0 and 16-0 kind of sized reels. Then he started to address the mass market in the 1940s and uh, had a Bronson uh, reels company, if I got that right, uh, manufacturing the reels for him. And again, it ran through the 19, 1960, I believe. So it's an amazing reel because it's somewhere between 60 and 80 years old. My guess from what I'm looking at this is it's probably a latter version in the 1950s as opposed to an earlier one, but beautiful condition and it works well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this reel apart and service it for Scott. We're going to show you how this reel comes together, how it was made, what may be unique about the reel, and what uh, what you should do if you have one of these to keep these working well. Uh, we're going to start by removing the exterior pieces. As I do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button so that you become aware of all of the videos that I post. I work on everything. I think that becomes apparent pretty quickly. Some days it's spinning wheels, some days it's trolling wheels, some days it's antiques, and some days it's the, uh, the latest iteration of fishing wheels out there. They all need service, and when they show up in my shop, a lot of times they become the candidates for how-to videos so you can learn to do it yourself and give your reels a second chance. Well, we took the handle uh, cap off took the handle off, well, uh, what we did that you may not be aware of is we took pictures. I encourage everybody to take pictures as you disassemble a reel. When you come to a critical junction point in the reel itself, please take the pictures and uh, that way you'll have a reference point if you get stuck along the way. Well, this has got some old dried grease in it, so between not having a line on it and some old grease, we're going to assume that this this warrior hasn't been fished in a while, but it, again, it's in beautiful condition, and hopefully we find the same inside. This has a star adjuster for your, uh, your uh, brakes, and it has a, a little collar here that's a, a gear sleeve uh, spacer, and that's going to allow you to apply pressure to the drag washers, and it's going to enable you to have some flexibility in how those drag washers either hold firm or give a little bit of slip for a fighting fish. I'm going to use a rod and reel cleaner here. This small piece that is leaked out onto the side plate. One of the things you need to consider when you're buying old reels like this is the condition of the reel cosmetically. These reels have, have some value, not a lot, surprisingly, but uh, if you um, if you're purchasing the reel and you want to use it, make sure that you have the integrity in these side plates. If they're chipped or cracked or broken, well, one, it's going to be very hard to find a replacement. And two, oftentimes it interferes with the operation of the reel. So be careful as you're buying. Scott has a nice buy here so far, as I can see. All of the pieces are in nice condition. The spool is not terribly corroded or anything. and. Uh, the reel kind of shines up nicely. All right, we're going to take the side plate screws out. There's three, three, and one. That's kind of common for a uh, Bronson reel. And um, two of these actually connect to the cross posts, and three of these 
connect to the real seat. And sometimes it's a very similar setup to a Ocean City reel. But Ocean City and Bronson were competitors. They, uh, they both made trade reels for the marketplace and they would often find the names of these reels on well, folks that uh, were department stores and the like. All right, well, I have a little bit of a problem here in that this cross post is turning. I don't want to mar the cross post, so I'm going to use a backing here, and then I'm going to grab the screw while holding firm. And now we've kind of loosened it up there. Not a problem, happens all the time. I'm expecting to see that the four screws holding the cross posts are longer than the screws that are holding the real seat. So what I want to do is I want to lay these out and make sure that I identify which ones belong where. Those are the four long ones for the cross post. I'm going to take those and I'm going to put those into my parts tray. My parts tray is just the bottom of a fast food container today. Tomorrow it might be the bottom of a milk jug or maybe something else. Yeah, the, uh, the real seat screws are shorter and you need to note that when you go to reassemble. Oh, that one's long. That's because the third one, the real seat, goes through the side blade and into the crossbar. All right, so I'm going to just keep those three off to the side, even though those two that go into the crossbar are likely uh, the same as the others. You also want to note that uh, there's a shorter crossbar here. That belongs on the bottom if you wind up taking the whole reel apart. For a basic service, you don't need to do that. You just want to make sure that the reel is cleaned, that you get the old greases out of there, and that you uh, put new grease in and uh, get it running again. You can see that we're definitely uh, out of grease here. That makes sense. Grease and oils evaporate. So I'm going to use fishing reel grease to kind of seal that up there so that when your spool goes back in, it's going to spin nice and freely. You can put oil in there if you like. Oil will evaporate quicker and uh, that may cause a problem later. Let's take a look at what we have underneath here. We have a kind of an interesting setup here for the release. We have a free spool release with yoke springs that press down. I believe this whole thing is integrated and uh, we'll start here first by kind of cleaning up the side plate. It's always interesting to see how these reels were manufactured. If you have any trouble with these reels, it's always a good idea to, to pull the schematic for these reels. And believe it or not, they are available. They're available, uh, for me anyway, at uh, Orca, Old Reel uh, Collectors Association. And uh, you can find them out there on the internet. And it's always a good thing to do that. There's four screws holding the bridge on. I am going to be careful about this. This would be a good way to take a picture, just so you get the orientation of things. I'm guessing that this uh, this yoke assembly is integral to the bridge, but if it isn't, I want to make sure that I identify that before I take it apart. Again, just like the other one, I'm going to take the four screws out and I'm going to lay them on the table because if there's a difference in the size of the screw, I want to know what it is. While I'm doing that, if you have any questions on uh, this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, if you uh, leave those questions in the uh, comment section, I will try to answer that. Well, you can see that we're in free fall now with this bridge. It's falling through and that's a good way to uh, trap the parts is to cup your hand so that it doesn't spray out when you remove the, uh, the side plate. Well, this parts tray is a fast food container, has two segments in it, and that's always good because I have eight corners, and I, I like to organize some of the pieces and parts in each corner as I take them off. All right, we're going to remove the side plate and see what we have here, and a very nice piece of machinery. As I had hoped, this is a system that is set up that has a uh, integral um, yoke system here, or integral, some people call it integral.
take the picture right here before you start doing any craziness. Uh, when you start doing this stuff, make sure you note that here is your anti-reverse dog spring. It's going to wrap around the screw that goes in there to hold that on. And you want to make certain that uh, when you go back to put that in place, that's how it works. So it comes, hooks into this little hole here, bends like a paper clip, goes around the stud here, and there is a, 40, uh, a 90 degree turn right here on the back neck of that anti-reverse torque. You need to know that. All right, we're going to see what we can do to take this off now. Interestingly enough, after all those years, these washers are still flexible. That's a good thing because I am unsure whether the there is a replacement, a direct replacement for these. A lot of the ones at the time, there, were, there weren't direct replacements, but it seems like Penn and Ocean City and some of the others kind of standardized on a dimension. That isn't true today, but it was then. And, uh, well, it just makes things easier if you need a replacement washer. These kind of look like the Pen 60 washers if you're in trouble with those. And uh, let's see what we have here. We have a pin. I'm going to try and see if I can get this sleeve off by pushing that pin through. It's possible that we can't. Don't know why that is. We have the pin. It may just be stuck from age. Well, there we go. Pushed it out there. That's the pin I was looking for. And I'll leave that right with that washer there. Usually I would put that into the tray. And then I'm going to push up on the anti-reverse dog to get that out of the way. And then try to remove this gear sleeve. You want to do that. And you want to be careful about this anti-reverse dog. But you can see we have some old greases in that under there. Actually, we just have wear that's tarnish. Yeah, that's just tarnish. Let me use a piece of steel wool, see if I can get some of that off. Yeah, that's just tarnish at the moment. Okay, so <clears throat> if this is working, this is not worth the risk of trying to take all these springs off. Uh, I think the answer here for certain, we want to make sure that we grease and clean. This is very clean. We'll grease the shoulders of the yoke and we will oil uh, onto the pinion gear and uh, we'll settle in. A lot of times these older reels uh, just uh, become project reels because somebody wanted to take it all apart and got stuck and this is one of those cases where the discretion is the better part of valor so I I put the grease into the slot for the yoke um, uh, for the pinion gear as that's rotating it's actually greasing the shoulders on both sides you can see how the grease has come through here and that's what's important in terms of keeping this thing running nicely Check all the teeth. I'm not sure there's anything you can do about those teeth at the moment, but check all those teeth to make sure that they're uh, even and uniform. All right, the gear sleeve is in good condition. There's nothing behind it. Remember this anti-reverse dog. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on through the shaft here. Don't put too much on, it's just gonna squeeze it out. We're going to ride that shaft down, and now we need to set that anti-reverse dog. You do that by pulling up on that anti-reverse dog as you push down on the sleeve. Once you have that sleeve in place, go ahead and put the pin back in. And make sure that that pin is fully seated into the gear sleeve. And we can give it a turn here and make sure that everything's working fine. There is an oiler function on this button. We put the grease in, so you do not need to oil. But if you did, you could. I'm going to take that leather washer now, and we're going to put some grease on that. I'm using a dry grease. You don't 
we need a drag washer grease. These are permeable, so you want to make sure that they maintain their flexibility. Take that, and now we're going to slide that back over the way it came out. We'll take a look now at the main gear and assembly. As we suspected, these um, are in good condition. I'm checking on the teeth of the main gear. I'm going to use a hard brush more for a demonstration purpose than anything. These teeth are all clear, but you want to brush out any old grease that remains in there. Now we're going to use a fishing reel grease. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease to grease the teeth on this. And then we're going to reinstall this on the shaft. And we're going to continue with the washer service. So it is an amazing reel. It's got a nice um, design to it. It certainly lasted a long time. The reels were made for 20 years and uh, they still as good today as they were then. This one obviously has been kept oiled because uh, when I lifted that off of the uh, dry metal, well, it was nice and uh, nice and oiled. Again, we can take these and we can put the dry grease on them. This is Cal's Universal Dry Grease. Run it in, mop it off. Anything extra is, well, it's just that, it's extra. Just trying to find the clear one. The top one always gets tarnished and is a little bit of a problem, so make sure you put it back onto the top. The design of these, this one has a D shape, so find the flat side of the pier sleeve and then go ahead and install the middle. The round one goes top and bottom one with the prongs on it is called an eared washer. That goes in the middle and that sits in the cavities of the main gear. So, so much about the fishing reel service is about cleaning up the old grease, inspecting the parts, and re-greasing, re-oiling. So, I know there's some folks out there that want to do a restoration, they want to take every piece and part off. And I guess I would encourage you to think about that. It's, uh, it's not needed, but you may want to do that. If you do, uh, just be prepared. In this case, I, we did fine with uh, greasing all of the main gears, including getting it onto the yoke. So the one thing I just want to put on here before we go any further is a drop of oil. I'm going to hold it upside down so that that seeps in behind the jack. And that's important to keep this one running smooth too. Springs are, are just uh, torsion uh, bent metals. You don't need to oil springs. And what we do need to do though is we want to come over here and get a little bit of grease into the spool carrier on the far side of the reel here and put a little bit of grease on the eccentric. With that done, we can reinstall. Just take the assembly, line everything up, and make sure that when you set this, that you set this for that stud on the eccentric to be inside the jack. All right, we took those four screws out and they were all the same. So it doesn't matter where you put them back. And what to me matters is put them back in the opposing direction. So start with one, let's call it north, south, east, and west, but just go opposing. Go bottom high, left low, if you will. Go left high. What are we doing this for? To get the even tension onto the bridge. If you kind of do it circular, you may have something that gets caught in there. And if that's the case, well, you may have a problem with that. Give it a turn now, make sure everything's working fine. The thing I was concerned the most about was that anti-reverse, and it's certainly doing well there. All right, almost time to wrap this reel up. I'm going to take the grease and put a little bit onto the shaft. We weren't able to do anything on the inside of that pinion gear, so that's what you want to do there. And then I'm going to release. 
The release is going to allow me to put the side plate on without worrying about meshing the, the tongue that's going to go in here. Let's line up the side plate holes. And we're going to do the same thing here that we did with the other ones. We know we've got a whole bunch of long ones and a short one. Let's go uh, a triangular pattern, if you will. We'll do top, bottom, and side. And again, you're just looking to keep the tension the same on the side plate as you do this. So we'll go over to the other side. 180 degrees away. And this is the best way to assure that you don't have any binding going on in the reel. We'll place that one down. So it was 60 plus year old reel. And uh, amazing in the sense that the uh, drag washers were still relatively fresh. I'm going to assume at some point in time this reel has been serviced. And we took the short screw to put in here. Now, because I have those two in the corner, we're just going to go right over to the sides here. I'm going to use those two just so that I don't confuse those with the other two side plate screws. Again, we're trying to keep the tension on both sides. Well, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, and if I've said this before, I will apologize, but uh, I try to help. I try to give everybody who's got a, a, a reel question or working on a reel and having a problem, try to give them a little assist. So uh, if you have one, leave it in the comment section, and I'll be happy to try and uh, respond to you. I don't know all the reels, that's for sure. I know a lot about uh, a lot of reels. And if I can help you resolve your problem, some of, sometimes uh, the problem is independent of the actual reel itself. It, uh, it's more of a universal problem with the fishing reel. But uh, leave that in the comment section. I will try to give you an answer on that. All right, we got one more here. And we'll uh, try and re resemble the side here, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Nice reel overall. As again, it's somewhere between 1940 and 1960s, the manufacture date on this, and uh, I'm impressed. All right, gear spacer goes on. Washer goes on behind your adjuster. I was in error, I should have taken the picture. It goes on top of the adjuster. How do I know that? I just saw the track. There's a little wear track on here. Tighten that down. Put the next one on. You can see on the back of the, the handle how you have that uh, indentation for that washer as well. Use the handle as a wrench now as you continue to tighten down that drag washer. You're doing that for two reasons. You have to get the clearance on the shaft for that handle cap. And also you don't want to trap that star adjuster as you go about doing the work. This star adjuster is a 9 16 American SAE sized wrench. This handle was loose when I started. It's not loose anymore. Time for the final test then. Gloves are off. Here we go. In free spool, uh, just a beautifully turning, no chirping, nothing going on. Solid spool. Let's go into gear. Look at that. What a beautiful reel. Are the drags holding? They are. Now back the drags off when you're done with your test. You don't want to compress those leathers. And again, we'll just give it one more spin just to enjoy it. So that's it. That's your J.A. Coax model 625, made somewhere between 1940 and 1960 when the reel was discontinued. A 60-year-old plus amazing reel. I hope you've enjoyed it. To everybody who's watching, thank you for watching. Please stay safe, stay well. Have a great day fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.